Uh, so yes, thank you, Julia. As um, Julia said, I am Sandy DeBay. I own um, Platinum PR. We are getting ready to rebrand, so I'll tease them out a little bit. Um, to we are going to be PPR Strategies, um, little you know early launch, depending upon when this happens, when this video and training goes live. But uh, we work with people and places and try to, so the PPR is People and Places Reimagined and helping economic development and tourism workforce-based organizations uh, to grow and thrive and connect with their audiences. When, and Julia mentioned the um, podcast, our first foray into podcasting was to um, create our own. Um, I had served on podcasts as a guest I had helped clients um, within the kind of conceptual podcast space, but there is no better way than to dive in deep and figure it all out. I had, we have a contractor with, that helps with the technical kind of programming, editing side of podcasting, but today I'll go over kind of some basics, a little overview of some of the things to be thinking about. You're good. Uh, so when we, you know, think about podcasting and what we're going to be doing at the, at its core podcast of storytelling and finding a platform and I've got some statistics in a little bit, um, to either justify the reason for podcasts, um, and thinking about that or things to be aware of. So, but at its core podcast of storytelling, whether you are going to be the only one on the, you know, on air you know, telling a story about your organization, your, you know, a big anniversary celebration or providing people tips and ideas of, uh, you know, how to live a healthier lifestyle and what it is that they might want to do. Or if you want to uh, bring in guests and hear from them, maybe you aren't the subject matter expert. Uh, maybe you want to hear from others and create a platform um, for others to share their thoughts and ideas. Um, the podcast that we created a couple of years ago is called The Frederick Factor. And we wanted to uh, hear and tell stories of underrepresented business owners, entrepreneurs, um, and leaders in the community. So we created uh, a very quick season. We did 12 episodes as our first season and interviewed 12 different entrepreneurs. It was awesome. I absolutely loved every single thing about it. Um, and I wanted the podcast to live on, um, but it needed to live on in a new way that wasn't just through my lens and my contacts or people that I wanted to connect with. So I engaged a host for season two, um, Ashley Kiggins, who is a local commercial realtor here in Frederick, and she became our season two host. So I share that because you can Think of ways a podcast can seem really intimidating and really time consuming, but how can you do that so that it's manageable um, and it doesn't have to be an infinite number? Um, you know, you have, I listen to podcasts that people have recorded, you know, episode 562, and they've been doing this for years and years and years, and that seemed really daunting for me. So I decided that I was going to limit myself to 12 episodes, see how it went, see how it felt kind of, you know, just a start and a stop date for it. Um, and then when I fell in love with it, but decided that it needed um, greater voice than I could provide, um, tapped a season two host. And now we are um, working on our season three host. So have been really excited with that evolution and um, progress for our podcast. So a lot of these, the lessons that I'll share have been from that Frederick Factor podcast. When we think about technology, um, I do like gadgets. <laughs> so we did, and when we moved into our office space um, here downtown, um, one, there was a, a small office that could have been my office, but I instead um, made it a podcast studio. So we, I hired a, a technical contractor. He came in, told me what equipment I needed to buy, um, helped me to set it all up. And now I'm able to do that without him leaning over my shoulder, um, telling me what to do. 
I laugh because one of the things when he came in, he was a sound engineer. Um, that was his degree, that's his profession. Um, and when he came into the space, he said, oh my gosh, if you listen, you can hear the elevator when it runs. Are we gonna be able to record this podcast when the elevator's not running? I said, no, you're just gonna have to get over that hum that's gonna last about 10 seconds and be done. So what I'm saying, my advice there is listen to the experts um, and then make your own decision that's right for you. I was not about to go to our property management company and say, could we turn off the elevator for like an hour, um, you know, once a week um, because I need perfect silence. Um, but instead we, we put up some, um, uh, paneling is to you know some uh, you know sound absorbent paneling and it's fine mm -hmm. um, we are you know n n not recording you know Garth Brooks latest album or Taylor Swift's latest album we are recording the Frederick Factor or other podcasts in the space so technology I do have some information um, about the technology that we're using um, and uh, can go over kind of some costs and resources and stuff like that. I've got a picture, graphic, um, you know, of that in a minute. But before we do anything with podcasting, and if you're thinking about it, think about your goals. Is your goal to reach a particular audience? Is your goal to share ideas and just, you know, maybe you like to talk a lot and you would like to record it and think that somebody else would like to hear what you have to say. Um, are you thinking about that, you know, um, from a, as a business development, Piece. Are you looking to um, either bring in guests that could potentially hire you? This gives you a great little intro um, with those guests. Um, or are you um, trying to share information, news, um, data, things like that out into the world? So think about your goals. Think about how you're going to track and measure the return on your investment. And that investment is literally the money that you're going to spend on equipment, um, on editing, on, um, you know, subscriptions for uploading services, things like that, down to your time. And that's what will probably have the greatest value um, and be the, the most expensive commodity is going to be your time and how you execute um, on that. So really think about your, your goals um, and at this point, I'm trying to be cognizant of the video, but I would love to see if, if people, can we get com interaction here in the room? Okay. Um, does anybody, you know, John, you had talked about, you know, how you were kind of very new to thinking about podcasting. Um, do you have ideas of um, content or some goals that you would like to accomplish with the idea, with the, Business with the podcast? Development. Business development. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Dave, what about you? Yeah, business development. Yeah. Uh, stuff like that. And there's, what did we talk about today? There's 96 million people that are pre-diabetic in this world. Mm -hmm. One in three people is on metformin. And it's all because of what we put in our mouths. And mm -hmm. it's just getting the word out to say, you know, in little bits of, you know, like I could do a whole podcast on sugar, mm -hmm. you know, or proteins or whatever, and just, and processed. And, you know, I'm not here to save the planet. I would like to do my little part. But you know, we have these great conversations all the time where we look at each other and say, we should record this. Mm -hmm. This is good. Mm -hmm. Oh. You know, I get up every morning and my habit is to have coffee. Yeah. Some would say that that caffeine is an addiction. So mm -hmm. we have diabetics who take their insulin and go grab a chocolate bar because their sugar drops. Mm -hmm. So is it is it a habit? Is it an addiction? And, and where does that line get drawn? I mean, we just think other people want to think about it too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Cool. Cool. Well, and uh, Ainsley and I were talking earlier, um, I would like to make running a habit. Um, I don't know that I will ever get to the point where it will be an addiction. Um, so, um, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. 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 Cool. Uh, Nicole, what about you? What are you thinking about in terms of, you know, you obviously you, you said before we started that you recorded your first podcast. Uh, tell me what's in your head a little bit. 
So um, for us at Habitat, it's just another way. Um, it's another way to reach people. You know, yeah. it's, folks don't read emails anymore. I mean, how many hundreds do we each get in our inbox? Social media is great, but the algorithms we gotta play with. Like, it, it to me, it was just another layering mechanism to be able to reach folks and share the good things that are happening mm -hmm. um, around housing for us. So I don't know if it's something that is the right fit for Habitat on a regular basis, mm -hmm. but I don't know that it's not. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so I wanted to come and figure out. We've done one. It was really fun. It's very well received. So is it something to continue? Well, and I think you know, John, from a business development perspective, you know, maybe interviewing potential clients or people that you've worked with before to hear, uh, you know, projects. You do want to be careful that it's not too salesy because, you know, people will tune off. That's what ads are for on here. Um, but that um, it is a great intro. Hey, I would love for you to be a guest on my podcast and we'd like to talk about this new technology that's happening or this, you know, new, um, you know, or just or talk about AI. I mean, whatever it happens to be, you could have some fun things there. Um, and uh, Dave, I think that in yours, you could probably the two of you could you know sit and have a conversation, or you could just provide some quick tips and make it even you know a ten minute real quick listen podcast um, with you know and then getting into links and follow up. And it is you know when we think about creating original content for marketing purposes, we think about blogs, um, social media, um, you know, quick posts, um, and podcasts is certainly another one of those pieces. If you feel much more, if you feel more comfortable communicating verbally, then you might lean more to a podcast. If you need time to think and perfect and, um, you know, write and rewrite um, and double check every detail, then maybe that, maybe a blog format, you know, of the written word would be better suited for you. So thinking about who you are uh, and how you feel most creative and can sustain something. Um, and advice I give every client, anybody I ever talk with about marketing, and they ask me, you know, what's the, what's the, the best marketing tool? It's anything that you're gonna stay consistent with. Um, but also giving you permission to experiment. And uh, that's okay. We tried TikTok a few years ago uh, to see if that was something that our office um, should be doing and helping economic development organizations um, establish and maintain a TikTok channel. Um, if you visit Platinum PR on TikTok, you will find out that we did that. We did gave ourselves a ten episode or you know a ten video TikTok challenge. Um, I like small numbers, but I'll go double digits. Uh, and uh, we gave ourselves a, a ten TikTok challenge, and that's it. Um, the TikTok page has not been updated in two years, and it's because it was not the best platform for us. Uh, but we tried, and we you know are very open and upfront about having tried that, and allocating our resources somewhere else. So anyway. I'll let you share when you, um, if you want, if you would like to share um, who you are, but you, I'll let you finish your um, bite of food there before we, uh, so we'll move on. Uh, some, some quick facts, which I thought were somewhat fascinating. Um, 464 million podcasters listening globally. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. Um, you know, the majority of Americans, um, ages 12 to 54 have listened to a podcast in the last month. So if you, if your demographic is anywhere in that range, something to think about. 22% um, of people listen to podcasts while driving. So when we talk, when we'll talk a little bit later about, you know, the power of show notes and some of those details, be careful that that's not the default of everything. Um, you know, be mindful that somebody might not go back and listen to your show notes or read your show notes while you, you know, and click on all the links um, within those show notes after they have parked their car. So you might just have them captive while they're driving. They might not ever go back and do those things. Not to say don't do that. That's not my advice. I'm just saying you need to be aware 
that so many people are, are listening. Um, I listen to a couple of, you know, mindfulness or, um, you know, kind of personal growth podcasts. And oftentimes there will be a disclaimer. If you are driving, please do not, you know, close your eyes and start this meditation process. Wait until you are, um, you know, seated uh, differently. Um, Apple Podcasts, so obviously Spotify, you know, other platforms, um, but Apple Podcasts does hold the number one spot um, with 38% of all uh, podcasts um, being listened to on that platform. So there are tools, there are resources, there are going to be options, um, and sometimes the data is fun to be aware of. Oh my gosh, that white looked so much, or the little grayness looked so much better on my... Um, on my computer than it does here. But um, so thinking about it, okay, so you're here. We've been talking about podcasts for a few minutes. Let's, we've come up with an idea. We've developed our goals. We're starting to think format. We're starting to think about if we want it to be information, you know, Q and A, you know, something that um, where we're, we are interviewing an interview format, or we're just gonna be, you know, on air talky talk. Um, we're gonna think about the technology that we need what does that space and environment look like? Um, and then how are we going to implement it? Before we dive into technology, I just wanted to, again, paint a little bit of a picture of what that timeline could look like. You've come up with your idea, you're figuring out your format, your schedule, um, how much time you have to invest in this, when do you want it to launch, um, what, what is that, going to look like and kind of backing out from there. If this is, um, you know, a number one priority, you're going to kick off every Monday morning, then this is what you're going to work on for a chunk of time. Um, you know, think about how much time you have and what the resources you have to invest in it. Uh, think about the equipment, your location. Are you going to um, do podcasting remotely and, you know, carry that through from cell phone or more advanced microphone um, audio capturing technology? Um, and, or are you gonna be stationary in your space? As I shared my, my elevator story earlier, uh, will you have a dedicated space environment um, to have greater quality controls on your podcast or are you gonna take it on the road? I'm working with a, um, a client now that wants the podcast to be strictly on the road. He wants to go to their location. He wants to go to somebody's office and interview them in their space. Um, and that's great. He just needs to think through those technical logistical details when doing it. Um, one of the more complicated ones, he wants to record one on a transit bus. He wants to like, you know, be interviewing, not the bus driver while the bus driver is driving, but interview somebody while riding on a transit bus. Um, we haven't worked out those logistics yet, but um, that's, you know, so many opportunities to, um, you know, Dave to interview somebody in their kitchen, um, walking through their space. Um, again, being aware if you are doing strictly audio or a hybrid of audio and video. Um, there are no rules. You create the rules. That's the beauty of all of this. So we yeah, get to do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We help them navigate the grocery store. Yeah. And that would be a great video. Yep. And then maybe to contradict myself on the um, or the fact on the downloads, that probably if there was a shopping list mm -hmm. or a tips for or things to think about, that is probably a list that I would go back to. I would, you know, bookmark that that podcast episode and I would go back online on my phone, you know, later when I'm parked my car and take and and download. I think that would be a great resource for people. Um, and thinking about how you can partner with the grocery store. I think of the common market here in Frederick and they might be somebody that would want to sponsor that episode or be the subject matter expert that is helping to guide you and your client through the grocery store it would be fun. I, and I actually don't get into advertising um, much here today, but we can certainly talk about that. Um, so your brand, um, basically we don't create a business, we don't you know, create a, a website without having that brand identity 
naming discussion, um, searching for available names, um, search, you know, trying to see what is out there in the space, um, how you are unique, how you are going to um, design those, those graphics, what's going to be, you know, kind of the voice and format all need to come into effect um, when we talk about the brand of the podcast. Um, and then guests. So as you see, we're kind of working our way towards getting ready for, you know, a launch here in our podcast. But um, guests, we always start with a big old brainstorm list. Nothing like a dry erase board um, to, with others, um, you don't have to do this just yourself. You know, other people love to throw out ideas and um, have thoughts and opinions and um, can uh, help you with that. Once you brainstorm the list, start inviting people. I would suggest creating you know, a kind of a templated email um, or script for yourself um, when inviting people. What are their expect? What are your expectations of them? How long is it going to take? Is it going? To, do they need to be in person with you? Will they be online? You know, at, at a remote location. Um, what are their? What are the technological needs that they need to have on their end? We're doing a podcast for a, with a client right now that. Um, you know, we've had to remind people to, um, you know, have some external microphone, you know, headphones that aren't or are, uh, isn't just what's built into the computer, um, you know, and you can really hear the difference um, with a little bit of technology preparedness. Um, editing. So um, obviously, you know, we've so we've recorded the interview. We brought the guests in. We've recorded the interview. We've had all the technology um, in place, and now we're going to get down to editing and um, figuring out if we're going to have ads, if we are going to have any sponsored content, um, if that is uh, something that you, um, you know, how does that align? How are you going to do that? That's kind of a whole other piece to the job um, if you want it. You don't have to have ads and sponsored content. Um, it can all be original organic content, but it is an option. Um, show notes, links, um, you know, thinking about the, um, the details. Are there, um, are you going to record and edit um, and ultimately put out into the world a more organic conversation or are you expecting to edit big chunks of that recording um is it is there going to be a you know a part one and a part two um are you um, hoping to just capture some sound bites um you know so thinking through kind of what that what that format looks like uh, your promotional plans as much as we would love with all those listeners for them to just find you organically. Um, there is a percentage of them that probably will, depending upon your topic and the platforms that you are hosting. We talked about Apple and um, Apple Podcasts as, and Spotify and things like that. Um, but you also can't or shouldn't just leave it up to those platforms to work their magic. You need to work your magic. Um, and put out, push out on your business and or personal social media. Uh, maybe you, if it's for an organization like Habitat, uh, maybe you send out an email that says, oh my gosh, look, we did this thing. Come listen, um, invite people, engage with them, um, encourage. If you have a guest, give them the content that they need to say, oh my gosh, I was just interviewed on this amazing podcast. Um, please, I encourage you to listen. And um, as with any marketing, particularly on social media, it's not a one post and done. Um, figuring out what that what that repetition looks like, um, what the uh, what the frequency looks like of your podcast. If you were to do podcasts weekly, um, maybe three weeks later you're promoting your week three podcast, but you're also saying, hey, in case you missed it, our first podcast was amazing, and we interviewed you know, Jane Doe and the conversation we talked about this other thing. So thinking through those details. And then the most nauseating butterflies in your stomach thing is when you go live and, you know, put this out there into the world. So I will confess, um, I never listened to one episode of my podcast, The Frederick Factor. I couldn't do it. 
Like that's why I have a team and they can edit and they can listen to my voice. And because um, we don't sound like what we think we sound like in any recording. So if you are able to have a team and do that, I just trust it, please. Yes. Oh, I was going to speak to that because yeah. um, I know how hard it is to listen to yourself, but. It can push back. I love it. At the craft. Out you're right. How we're going to ask questions in such a way that you're going to get the types of stories and good content mm -hmm. that you want. You are so right. Yep. Yeah. Do as she says, not as I said. Yeah. <laughs> not as I did. Do as she and says, not as I did. Yeah. 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 It is painful. Yeah. Like it's not. It's not fun. Mm -hmm. But it is. I think it's sometimes necessary. You're right. You're right. And I do that with <laughs> other pieces. Um, but no, that's. Awesome advice. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Please. Hi, I'm, I'm Bethany Good, and I'm a professional, professional writer and editor. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you. So, equipment. Um, so, in a little picture, this is literally the equipment that I use. Now, this equipment is hooked up to um, a computer because we wanted, we started the Frederick Factor. Um, during the pandemic and I wanted to be able to interview people even locally in an environment that they felt safe. Uh, so we did, it runs through the computer and we've got, you know, we were using Zoom. We weren't using um, any other fancier technology. Um, there are lots of other platforms that are a lot more sophisticated. We're using Riverside um, as a site as a platform right now for capturing for another client. Um, so there is stuff out there. but. These two pieces together, you know, less than $500, um, like drastically less than $500, but I believe. Um, but then you've got, you know, a couple of cords and um, this device, um, this Zoom device, not confusing at all, um, but um, this device is um, battery controlled or can be connected to an outlet. Um, so you've got that flexibility to take it on the road, you know, get on the transit bus and uh, interview, interview somebody in that capacity. Um, and then we're launching and we're doing our thing and kind of sitting back and wa watching the numbers happen. Um, but I appreciate, it was Bethany? Yes. Awesome, thank you. I appreciate the feedback and now you have challenged me to go back and uh, listen to other things. Uh, I thank you for that. I truly believe, and I just love this quote from Tony Robbins, so I like to end with it um, in anything I do. Um, but where our focus goes, energy flows. And if you devote the time and the energy to producing and creating and launching out there into the world, some stories, some tips, some ideas that you have to share, um, you will see that coming back and return back to you. So I encourage you to embark on this new podcast journey, and I can't wait to hear what you all produce. Contact information, all the things. But more importantly, I did a little free download um, that has a lot of these tips, um, but is a, a resource for you. So you don't have to rewatch on YouTube. You can um, you know, just capture the QR code here. That's it.